What's going on guys? I've been doing a lot of research on the death of the middle class. And the middle class has been dying for quite some time. It's been getting dramatically smaller and smaller and smaller. So this isn't new news. What is new is the acceleration of the death of the middle class. And I feel that in 2022 to 2030, we will have more people who will systematically be moved out of the middle class than ever before for the following reasons. I was watching some documentaries and if I forget, let me know in the comments. I was watching these documentaries of people who were formerly middle class who were living in hotels. This is a big, big thing. There's a lot of people who used to live in a house, live in an apartment. They're living in a motel. And there, some of these people have been living in these motels for years. And one of the things that we're beginning to see in this strange economy is that people, the employment opportunities, like right now, unemployment is supposed to be 4.2 I, I i didn't check before i did this video so i'm, I'm not going to say on that but crime is escalating it doesn't make sense if there is plenty of jobs out there for crime to be spiraling out of control that doesn't make any sense so i think what we're going to see is part of the segmented economy based upon traditional marketplace factors. We're not in a recession based upon the numbers and based upon the numbers, we have very low unemployment. However, when you start to get into segments, because this is something that I've routinely seen uh, since I was renting cars, I would get someone who would be a long-term renter and they would be good to go. And invariably they would run into a problem and they would start being late. This has happened to each and every one of my renters, each and every one of them. At first it'll start off as a, you know, few hours. They'll be three, four hours late. Then it'll be 12 hours late. Then they will go to two days and they would go to three days. And these people who normally didn't have a problem paying their rent on their car ran into what I call the decaying stimulus economy. When we had the stimulus economy, there was a lot of money in the stimulus economy. We had Uber and Lyft drivers making nine, 10,000 a month because there was so much stimulus money. And now that that money has been sucked out and we're dealing with the real economy, we're dealing with shortfalls and we're dealing with issues. Cause like I said, I, I'm just like, I, it's almost predictable what's going to happen because once they start being late, one day, two days, shut the car off and just go get it. Because um, one of the things I am seeing, and this is, let, let's have this conversation. If we go back to granddad, your granddad's day, there was a lot of opportunity from you to go from poor to solid middle class. Now, what is solid middle class? You actually owned a home, you had a car or two, you had a wife and one to three children. And you, your granddad, was able to go work at Ford or Pontiac or USS Steel or the coal mines, and he was able to easily support his wife and family, buy a house, buy a car, and participate in the American economy. That was solid middle class. Now, what is the average home price right now? I think it's like $400,000. And what do you need to get a $400,000 house? You need either a large down payment or a six figure income. And based upon the stats, only 10% of the country makes single person 
Uh, I don't know what it is for, you know, a dual income family because average household income is only like 61,000. So average household income is not enough to afford the average price of a home right now. That's cannot go on forever. And that's why I feel that the market's going to correct. Once again, let's, let's be 100% sure on this. Home prices are not going to crash anytime soon. If that's your fantasy, if that's your hope, um, good luck with that. But prices will slow down and they will adjust. And then, you know, if there's a 400,000, if they were asking 420, they may come down to 395. That, you will see those kind of adjustments. You're not gonna see if it was like 400 and it's gonna to go to 200. You're not gonna see anything like that. But once again, going back to why has the middle class started to die? And it goes back to the 70s when they started to ship by manufacturing. If you didn't understand the economy, America was the manufacturing basket of the world. We made everything. We had serious exports. We we were ship, we were making and shipping stuff literally all over the world. And then some smart people figured out that if we went to these lower scale economies and we set up factories and built uh, manufacturing that, that positions that we could make these products for significantly less and sell them for more. And that's what happened. I remember growing up in Birmingham, Alabama, and there was a USS Steel in Inslee. And I remember we were like, uh, I had a relative where we, we have to go through Inslee to get to her house and I remember those steel mills were pumping 24 seven. You, you rode through there and you could see the fire and all this other stuff. They were making steel products from, because if you didn't know anything about Birmingham, Alabama, Birmingham, Alabama has the natural habitat of having coal and iron oil and great and iron ore in great abundance. So it was a perfect place to set up a steel mill. Uh, I have not talked to anyone in a while, but I believe all the steel mills are closed because during this transition, it was cheaper to import Japanese steel than to make it here. It was cheaper. So this created this cascade, this um, problem, this situation where the middle class started to slowly die. Like I said, the middle class dying has not been nothing new. This is not newsworthy. What is newsworthy is the acceleration of the killing of the middle class. This is new because the global reset, because once again, I've been looking at jobs. I've been really paying attention to jobs. And like I said, I've signed up for Instacart, I've signed up for Uber, and I just, I have no intentions of doing any of these things because like going to go to the grocery store is not my ideal of a good time. You know, I actually use Instacart because I, I hate going to the grocery store. So um, I'll go in there every day and I look at the number of batches and I look at the um, money that can be made. And one of the things that I'm consistently seeing is if you're on it and you know my area is pretty high instacart area you can make 120 to 150 bucks a day 120 to 150 bucks a day that is not enough money for a middle class lifestyle that is not enough money to have a middle class existence by my estimates based upon the price of a house and the price of a car you're going to need 85 to about 125,000 per year to be middle class in America this is my estimations you know this isn't the internet just based on what things cost you know with a house being the most significant thing because 
During this global reset, and like I said, I watched about six hours of these documentaries of these people. There was this one guy, um, he was a consultant at a resort and he and his wife and six children lived in the hotel and they've been living there for a year. It, it was heartbreaking that this man and his family were living in a hotel. And I'm gonna do a whole special video on that because that's like, if you wanna buy some real estate, buy a extended stay hotel. That's gonna be a growth industry. It's gonna be a serious growth industry for the next 10 years. And I was listening to what he was talking about and his, you know, how he interacted with his kids. This guy used to be middle class. You could tell by his mannerisms and the things, and they were still holding on to a few things. But what is happening, and this is a big, big issue. If you don't have the income, you have a skill set problem because there are a ton of jobs out there, but people don't that pay very well. Data scientists, um, programming, certain type of programming, data security. These jobs pay six figures. However, they need a person who has the aptitude and the experience to get these jobs. And that's where we run into a problem because I remember going to school and I went through a school system that was like, either you got the lesson or you got left back. <laughs> that was pretty much it. They had no problem leaving you back. And then we moved to this where we started passing and pushing children through school who couldn't read. I really want you to think about that. We went from an education system that promoted responsibility, that had outcomes and you know failure or success to a school system where if you just showed up, you got passed from grade to grade to grade to grade to grade. And this is how you have someone who graduates from high school who cannot read. So from a social, social economic systematic, we started first, we offshored, we, 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 we got rid of all the manufacturing. And then we changed our school system because if you had the time, I want you to go here on YouTube and I want you to watch students from the 1950s and 60s and watch them do interviews of these students from the 50s and the 60s. And you will see that these kids were way more mature, way more capable because of the school system that didn't play around. If you flunked, you flunked, you got left back. And then we moved to this self-esteem crap where, you know, if Johnny doesn't move ahead with his friends, Johnny's self-esteem is going to be crap. But here's the thing. When Johnny can't succeed in life, Johnny's self-esteem is going to be crap. And one of the things that I, I really look at, because I went through that old school system of accountability and consequences, and I don't really, I really am not sure when this new school system is, because that's a big problem of why we have a dying middle class because the school systems are not preparing people for the jobs of today. That is huge. That is huge. Because if you go through school and, you know, once again, I'm looking at the quality of schools. And if you are in a, if you're <clears throat> in a school system, is highly academic, highly rigorous, that's outcome based, more than likely you're gonna be living in the well-to-do neighborhood. And this, 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 this is, it's a cycle of self-fulfilling prophecy. If you're born poor in a poor neighborhood with a school that is scant on resources, more than likely your education is gonna suck. And this starts the, the chain because it, it goes back to education. 
<clears throat> everything goes back to education because right now, you know, I have a, in a collection of people that I know that are um, suffering. They're going through some stuff and people are not able to forecast. And this is something like, you know, I'll, I'll give you a little lesson in forecasting. When I joined Renocrate, they would ask us to forecast our sales. And you have to take your number of phone calls, your number of appointments, because if you made your phone calls and you got X amount of appointments, there was a formula that should yield <clears throat> pretty closely to what you would make. It was pretty spot on if you did the work. And that's, <clears throat> that's where the problem was, doing the work. Because it is like making 250 phone calls and actually getting a per, that's hard. It's really, really hard. But if you were able to hit those metrics, you could kind of predict what you would make per week, per month, per quarter, whatever. So a lot of people will make decisions in the vacuum. Like my friend who hated her job, quit her job, retired early, and here a year later, she's looking at being homeless. See, I'm really good. Like if I'm your friend and you know, we're really talking, I'm like, I've convinced a few people not to sell their businesses. I'm, I'm really good at forecasting and looking into the future. And if I had known her, I would have talked her out of quitting her job. Because I was like, look, this is what's gonna happen. Like, okay, you have X amount of months and your bills, and you know, just putting pen to paper and calculating what stuff costs. I'm, I'm really good at that. So I would have talked her out of quitting her job because when I look at, and this is why I like the whole great resignation thing and people quitting their job without another job to go to, I have seen numerous YouTube videos where people have talked about quitting their job and not having another job lined up. I've seen, and you know, for me, that is crazy. Because here's the thing, when you take active income coming in, you, you, you cut that off, you're at a point where you have no income coming in, right? And you're living on savings. Your savings will go three to five times faster than you think they will. Because there's no money coming in. And I know of a, a lady we're not real friends, but we were talking and we got a little deep and um, she she quit her job and she had fifty thousand dollars in the bank savings. She went through that in less than seven months, seven months. It took her, I think she told me five years to put that money away. And she went through five years of savings in seven months because when she quit her job, she did not change her lifestyle. And she still had, she had a credit card debt, she had a car payment, she had rent. And I was just sitting there and then she was telling me this stuff because I'm just sitting there like, when I was in retail, I could walk into a store and with a great deg degree of accuracy predict if that store was gonna be business six months from now. Just knowing what I, you know, and this was based on old retail. These rules and metrics don't exist anymore because everything's moved online. Because it used to be when you owned the store, you had to have so many square feet, so many your products. There, there was a, a formula and there was a math. Like if you wanted to, this is why these stores were always huge. This is why Best Buy is the size it is. This is why Walmart is the size it is. This is why Target is the size it is. This is why the grocery stores are the size they are. There's a formula for square footage, space, and product placement. And with your life, there's also a formula for income. And what I am seeing is with this great decline in the middle class, which you know, argumentably could be, be, it could be done on purpose because when you have a bunch of poor people 
with no money, they're very easy to control. I know you're like, what? Very easy to control. How do you control these people? TV, sports, programming. If you turn on your television, there's like three, 400 channels of mindless, aimless, this, this is programming. This is programming. There's a reason that these shows are on and they're not really good reasons. So during this global reset, um, we're going to see the meltdown of the middle class, which is already happening, accelerate, I'm going to say 4X to 6X, because what's happening, you look at the generation, you're poor in the poor neighborhood and income appreciation, uh, the climb the social ladder. You know, I did a video on this because I was wrong because, you know, I used to think that anyone could get rich in America if they just would do the right work. And after some deep analysis, I found out that that way of thinking was faulty. It was not accurate because I'm consistently looking at who does well and who doesn't do well. And it always comes back to environment. So if you're in a resource rich environment, you got a really good shot at being successful and doing well. But if you're in a resource deficient environment, I don't care how hard you work. It's, it's practically impossible for you to get ahead because success is a team sport. Success is not a singular person like, you know, um, if you look at sports, like Alabama lost to Georgia last night, right? And part of that happened because the team melted down. We had Michi, uh, Jamie Williamson, Joe, we had three key players hurt. So the team wasn't the team that it was during the regular season. And that's one of the big reasons, and Georgia is a very good football team. And I didn't really think that they were going to be able to beat Georgia twice because once you expose them, but the fact that they had three important key team members, resources that used to be available that were no longer available, that you, you could see what happened. Cause like when I was watching the game, I was like, they're going to lose. It just, boom, it just came to me. And then once again, it's the same thing in life. Getting rich is a team sport. Getting money is a team sport. Doing well is a team sport. And if you don't have the appropriate team, which most of the middle, um, you know, like, and I, I don't even want to call the people in the workplace who make less than $30,000 a year middle class. But there are many people in that classification who assume that they're middle class because they went to college. And one of the things that they did is they took income out the equation of middle class because you've got people who've got a four year degree, maybe they've got a four year degree and a master's degree and they are a barista, but in their mind, they think that they're middle class because they have a degree, even though they don't have the accompanying income to go along with it because it used to be for you to be middle class in America, you had to be a landowner. You actually had to have some assets. That's what it took to be considered middle class in America a long, long time ago. Now you have people who are middle class in their mind, but they're living in a hotel working at Starbucks. Let me say this again. They're middle class in their mind but they're working at Starbucks and they live in a hotel. See, I call this the great Jedi mind trick and I'll do a whole video on that. But one of the things that we have got to understand, and if you're a citizen of the United States of America, because I know I get people from around the world who watch these videos, you have got to be working on increasing your skill sets because I don't care how hard you work a low wage job. 
that used to be me. I used to, and I, I really wasn't working a low wage job. I used to work in the hospital. I used to work in the laboratory. I had a full-time job. I had a part-time job. And I had a PRN job. And PRN, as you can call them up and say, hey, can I work certain night? And they say yes or no. So even with not being low income, and part of my problem is I, I committed a lot of self-inflicted wounds because my money management skills back then absolutely were atrocious. So that was one of the reasons because I made plenty of money, but I didn't know what to do with it. And that was one of the reasons that I was in this perpetual situation of suffering financially. So what we're going to see in the next 10 years is an accelerated hollowing out of the middle class. Now, some people have left some comments that's like when automation comes and all of these low wage workers are going to be replaced, capitalism depends upon consumption. And I'm about to throw you guys a curveball. Really? Capitalism depends upon consumption. Hmm. How does cryptocurrency work? Cryptocurrency doesn't pay a dividend. Cryptocurrency doesn't really provide anything data driven, but cryptocurrency can make the right person, the right schemes, a lot of money. So just like cryptocurrency works without the fundamentals of money, this new economy where these people, and like I said, I, I firmly feel that universal basic income is going to happen within the next 10 years because it's going to have to happen because we're going to have a large segment. Like right now, this is the situation. We got 160 million people in the workforce and of those 160 million people, 80 million people make $30,000 a year or less. And then we move it up to 50,000 about 120, 140, 100, 130, make less than 50,000 out of 180 million. And as we move up, the numbers drop. So what we're gonna have is a situation, because right now we have people, uh, I'm probably gonna do a whole video on it called Gig Nation, where people are doing DoorDash, Instacart, Uber, Lyft, and they don't have traditional jobs. But these jobs are highly irregular and unpredictable income. And I know of an Uber driver who lives in the hotel. Um, one of my renters, and he's never been late. But I was just on my GPS and I was like, why is this car at a hotel? And it just dawned on me, he lives in the hotel. And what you go, like I said, for you real estate investors, if you can invest in extended stay hotels, that's gonna be a growth industry. It's gonna be a growth industry because what I am seeing with the hollowing out of the middle class is that people cannot wait a week or two weeks to get paid. You know, strange, strange thing. Years and years ago, when I was in the workforce, you would start a job and you would not get a check depending on when you start the job, because it got to the point where they would try to start you where you would get a check in two weeks, but sometimes you would start and you wouldn't work for three weeks and not get a check. And they used to call it two weeks in the hole. So that meant that if you did, you gave your two weeks notice that and you started another job, you would get paid, even though you don't work there anymore, two weeks after you quit and you were rolling to your new job. And I, I remember one time that worked out really well for me because I quit one job. I gave my two weeks notice and I got paid two weeks after I quit and I got paid two, two weeks for doing my new job. So I got like two checks and it, it, was a, it was a party, it was a little party. But right now people are so financially pressed, they cannot wait two weeks to get a check. They cannot wait because one of the things that I found out that Uber started allowing people to download their money every day, every day. 
They could, these people could not go two or three weeks without a paycheck. Couldn't do it. McDonald's was doing daily pay. More than likely if McDonald's doing it, Taco Bell, Wendy's. So for you to avoid being globally reset and for you to avoid um, being generationally downgraded during the global reset, you number one have got to get control of your money. You have got to get a better grasp of your money. And number two, you've got to work on your skill sets. Those two things right there can prevent you from being globally reset. But if you just out here working at Amazon, doing Uber with no uh, future plans, no, no career path. And th this is something else too. A lot of people who are going to be globally reset don't have a career. They have a job. They don't have a career. They, they have no upward appreciation in their work field. And this is something that's going to get worse. It's going to get worse and worse and worse because it's 2022. And I feel in 2023, we're going to have a recession. And this is when things are really are going to start rolling. Um, part of me thinks of getting me like a little fortress, <laughs> but that's, I don't know. I'm, I'm just talking off my head, but part of what is going to happen as we move forward is we're going to see huge segments of society move to living in a state state hotels, living in vans or being homeless. And the homeless problem is just not going to go away anytime soon. It's just not. I feel the homeless problem is going to get worse and worse and worse. So what I'm getting ready to do is some trainings and I'm probably going to do when this post, this will be after I do a training and I may just post that training to YouTube or make it available for you guys, because this is going to be really pivotal stuff that you're going to need to do to prevent yourself from being globally reset. And um, I mean, seriously, I know it just sounds somewhat simplistic, but if you don't want to be globally reset, you are going to have to get on top of your money. You're going to have to, you're going to have to get on top of your money. You're going to get on top of your credit. You're going to have to be on this stuff like a demon because as we sit here right now, we have people literally shifting out of the middle class, dropping down, dropping down. Every day, someone leaves the middle class and moves down to generational poverty level every day. And these people are not stupid. They just are uninformed. They have no clue to what is happening because they're just going out to work living and being a, an American, which means I'm, I go to work and I spend money and I consume stuff. They're not um, aware of what is happening. They're not aware that if your income takes a hit for six months to a year, that is going to be reflected in the next 10 years. They don't understand, they understand. But the acceleration like once again, I've said this before, um, the middle class is being hollowed out. That that was been going on since they got rid of manufacturing and shipped a lot of stuff offshore. But this new wrinkle of accelerated hollowing out because there are jobs, but people are not prepared for these jobs. That's the big issue. And right now, it's going to get bad. It's going to get very, 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 very bad. And, you know, someone put, this is the channel of doom and gloom. If me telling you what is going to happen and what is happening makes you feel as doom and gloom versus I'm not going to 
paint rosy pictures when what I see is what I see. I mean, I'm a business owner. I am dealing with a lot of people in the fragile economic situation. I'm dealing with a lot of them. And I see this, I see this every day. And I can put blinders on and like, no, it ain't gonna happen, man. It's gonna be all cookies and punch. I think I would be doing you guys a terrible disservice. I think I would be really, really, you know, getting y'all hyped up. And then when darkness comes, when the darkness comes. So let me know your thoughts and opinions of this. This is all I got. I will talk to you guys in the next one.